scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of James. And there we find these words in verse 6 through 8. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. May God bless now the hearing and reading of his word. Amen. Amen. God be praised today. Amen. Amen. As we come now to the preaching hour, amen, we want to turn our attention to scripture that was read earlier in our hearing there in the book of James chapter 1. Amen. You would but keep your Bibles open in your lap, amen, as we would refer back to it, amen, again and again. As we look at the message for today, getting what you want in life and wanting what you get, amen, amen, uh, that's, that's a long one, amen. Uh, getting what you want in life and wanting what you get. Amen. Uh, sometimes, amen, we want right. stuff but we can't get it. Right. Amen. And sometimes we get stuff and we don't want it. Can I get a witness? Amen. amen. Uh, today's message is uh, to teach us today how it is that we can line ourselves up, position ourselves uh, to the extent that we can, in fact, get uh, the things that we want in life and how it is that we can uh, in tune ourselves up, amen, to be in line with the Lord to where we will appreciate what we get in life. And so that's the message I want to share with you. And if we are to consider how it is that we would be able to do such a thing, one of the things that would come to mind is that uh, we must have a sense of endurance in life. Mm. And that would remind me of the story that Brian Wilkerson uh, would share as he would recall his experience of running uh, the New York City Marathon. Mm. And it would be there that he would share the story about how uh, the first half of the marathon uh, was like a party. Mm. Mm. Uh, you would be swept along by 28,000 runners and uh, there would be the massive crowd that would be there lining the streets to cheer on the runners as they would begin the race. And then he would share the excitement of being able to tour the ethnic neighborhoods of Brooklyn and Queens. Um, and, and he would talk about how he felt like he could run forever at that moment uh, and time as he was uh, beginning the race. Mm. But then, he would share that around mile 13, as you would cross over into Manhattan, and you would begin to head north, away from the finish line. Crowds are starting to thin out about this point, and the party's over. <laughs> 
then as he would approach mile 16 or 18, uh, he would share how he would hit a wall. He would describe how he's absolutely miserable, both physically and psychologically. Uh, he's exhausted and busted. Um, and he would look over and he would pass the first aid stations and he would see runners who were lying on cots, some with IV uh, running into their arms. And he would think how lucky it is that they are able to uh, lie there and get some rest at this point. And he began to despair. Imagine himself having to go home and tell everybody about how he didn't finish. Mm -hmm. He wondered to himself at this moment why it is that he even signed up for uh, this race. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it that made him think that he could actually do this? Uh, that's when it hit him. Uh, when he began to consider that one way or another, he had to get to Central Park. He had no car, he had no money on him. Um, he would have to get there on his own two feet. Therefore, he concluded at this point that he might as well continue running. Um, and he just began to continue to put one foot in front of the other. He convinced himself not to think about the next six miles, but just to think only about the next step. And gradually, the miles would pass away. And when you cross that finish line, he would share it's like glory. Mm. Even when you're in 10,000, place. Uh, some of you right now, even here today, might be hitting a wall in your life. Mm -hmm. Feeling like you can't go on. Like you'll never make it to the finish line. Following Christ is harder than you ever imagined that it would be. And you're thinking about giving up, throwing in the towel, about doing something foolish in life. But today, my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you, don't you dare do it. Don't you dare head for the locker room early. Don't you dare throw in the towel. Don't you dare give up. There's no magic in enduring uh, my brothers and sisters, it's all about taking one step at a time and making it to the finish line. My brothers and sisters, if we are to figure this thing out and how it is that we are to endure long enough to get the things that we want in life, yes, uh, there are at least three things that are wrapped up here in this text that would teach us how we can do that. Uh, first of all, we've got to jump ahead to chapter 4, verse 3. And then we'll come back to this first chapter so that we can figure it out. Yes, because it's in that fourth chapter that once again he's talking about prayer and asking God for stuff. Uh, but it's there that he would share these words of wisdom that would flow into our understanding of how it is that we can, in fact, receive what we would want in life. He says this, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. 
that you may spend it on your pleasures. And so my brothers and sisters, if we are to get to or arrive at the place where we can receive, yes, we must first of all eliminate that which would prevent us from receiving. Um, he says that you ask and do not receive. And he gives us an explanation for why it is that we do not receive. He says we do not receive because when we ask, we ask amiss. And so my brothers and sisters, we have to look at this word amiss, which would help us in our understanding so that we would not do what it is he's saying uh, that causes us not to receive. And so my brothers and sisters, I look at this word, uh, kakos, uh, and it means uh, to be sick. It means to be diseased. Uh, it means evil or grievously sore, miserable. It's translated on this occasion as abyss. It's translated on another occasion as sick people. My brothers and sisters, uh, in essence, it means miserable to be ill. It means improper or wrong. It means to speak ill of or to revive. And so let's look at this text once again. He said, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. Yes, uh, in other words, the stuff uh, that we are asking for, yes, uh, is foul. Sometimes we can ask for some stuff uh, that will send us to an early grave. Mm. Yes, uh, some of the folk that we want to run with, uh, yes, will ultimately drain us of every drop of strength in our bodies. Uh, yes, uh, some of the places that we want to attend, uh, Yes, uh, will leave us wrecked and miserable. Yes, uh, and that's what he is getting at here in this third verse in chapter 4. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, nothing humbles the soul like sacred and intimate communion with the Lord. Yes, yet there is a sweet joy in feeling uh, that he knows all and notwithstanding loves us still. Yes, uh, those are the words of J. Hudson Taylor. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, that is a point uh, to what he shares with us. Uh, yes, if we really want to get what we want out of life, but yes, we've got to learn to dismiss the stuff that would make us ill, that would make us sick or miserable, those things uh, that would lead us down a road of, of evil or misery in life. Yes, because God is not going to give us the wrong stuff. Yes. Uh, God loves us enough to where God, uh, yes, wants to provide for us what is best for us. Yes, uh, and so sometimes, my brothers and sisters, as we contemplate things, uh, yes, uh, in our lives that would send us down the wrong road, down a dead end street, uh, yes, that would lead us to the hospital room, Yes, God says, no, I can't give you that. <laughs> yes, like a discerning parent, yes, uh, who would look at uh, that child who just turned 16, just received their driver's license, uh, yes, but they're asking for a Rolls Royce, asking for a Corvette, asking for a Maserati. 
Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, even if they're asking for a Mustang 5.0 or a Camaro, uh, yes, they may not in fact be ready for a car with muscle, a car with speed. Uh, at this point in their lives, uh, the parent has to say, no, it's not good for you. Yes, you asked a miss. So it is, my brothers and sisters, if we could eliminate and cross off our list of requests, that which is amiss, yes, it would allow us to move on to the other two points. Yes, that would put us in a position and a place in life where we can actually receive what we want in life. Yes, the second point that I want to share with you, which is the first point that will lead us to getting what we want in life. Yes, it's asking in the will of God. Yes, uh, if asking amiss is a sure way not to get, yes, then asking in his will is a sure way to get. Yes, uh, getting want what we want in life is not a manipulation of God in as much as it is an altering of our desires. Uh, yes, tuning ourselves in uh, to the frequency on which God resides. Yes, Psalms number 37 and verse 4 put it like this. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, getting what we want in life begins by, yes, delighting ourselves uh, in the Lord. Um, my brothers and sisters, that was a situation in 1999. On October the 31st, um, where a full airplane took off from JFK International Airport in New York. Yes, and on a routine flight to Cairo, Egypt. Yes, uh, uh, which should have been an easy flight uh, shortly after takeoff. Um, the relief first officer waited for the pilot to leave the cockpit. Then he disengaged the autopilot. He moved the throttle levers from cruise power to idle, cutting the engines. And suddenly the plane began to nosedive downward, and it descended into a free fall. And in the final moments before impact, the horrified pilot would dash back to the seat and he battled the co-pilot for the control of the plane. The pilot pulled back on his controls, desperate uh, to bring the nose of the Boeing 767 up. While the suicidal first officer would push his own controls forward to keep the jet diving. In Egypt, Air Flight 99 crashed into the Atlantic Ocean, just south of Nan Nantucket, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And all seven, 217 people aboard were killed. The battle in that airliner's cockpit is like the inner life of a Christian. Each day, we choose either to hijack control of our lives, mm. allowing our lives to plunge downward into sin. Or, on the other hand, we would have the choice to remain locked in the direction of God's will allowing God's autopilot to lead us safely on our destination as we would take our journey. 
my brothers and sisters, when he was crossing the Irish Channel, John D. Rockefeller Jr. would share that F.B. Meyer stood on the deck by the captain and asked him this question. In all of that darkness, he would say, how do you know Hollyhead Harbor on such a dark night as this? Listen to the answer that he would give. He said, you look out and you see those three lights. And he looked out and he saw the three lights and he said, yes, I see those three lights. He said, those three lights must line up one after the other until when you look at them, you see one unified light. And it's when you see that unified light, you know that you're headed to the harvest mouth. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, when we want to know God's will for our lives and what it is that we're asking for in life, there are, in fact, three things that must always line up. our desire, the word of God, and the outcome. If those three things can line up, then we would know that we are in fact in, in line to get what we are asking for. An individual's highest fulfillment and greatest happiness in life, and why this usefulness ought to be found in living in harmony with God's will. Mm -hmm. um, it's only when we are in the will of God and our desires are lined up with that and what it is that we hope to achieve is lined up with those two things. Mm -hmm. That we would have the Trinity uh, that would allow us to receive. Listen, Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. He went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it is possible that this cup pass from me. Listen. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. That, my brothers and sisters, is the model prayer for how it is that we can get what we want in life. Amen. God has no precious gift to the church than a man who lives as an embodiment of his will. My brothers and sisters, if we could but inspire those around us with the faith of what grace can do, my brothers and sisters, we would set forth an example to men and women, boys and girls around the globe of how it is that they can achieve and receive what they want in life. There's one more point that he would share with us today. If we are to get what it is that we want in life, and that is that we've got to ensure that we're asking in faith. Look again at the text this morning, but let him ask in faith. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable 
and all his ways. My brothers and sisters, if we want to receive from the Lord, then we must be convinced that God is yeah. and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Yeah. Yes, my brothers and sisters, we've got to learn to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. Yes, knowing that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Yes. Listen once again as Mark chapter 11, 23 and 24 would share this. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mount, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Yes, my brothers and sisters, as one old man put it, if we would pray to God for rain, then we all go and buy ourselves an umbrella. Right. Yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, we've got to believe and know uh, that God is able to do what is in his will. We've got to ask God with that kind of faith that kind of unwaveringness in our lives as we would request unto him what we would have in our lives. Yes, we must learn to see God through thick and thin. We must learn to see him through the fog of life. Yes, my brothers and sisters, Timothy George, tells the story uh, that was told by Dr. Gardner Taylor. And he would share uh, that when he was a student there at Harvard Divinity School and he was learning to preach from Dr. Taylor. Uh, those of you who remember the late Dr. Gardner Taylor pastor there in New York one of the largest churches that was there for many years. And he would remember him telling uh, the story about how he was preaching there in Louisiana during the Depression. Uh, during this time, um, electricity was just uh, coming into that part of the country. And, and there he was in this rural church black church there and they had just one light bulb that was hanging down from the ceiling and that one light bulb would light up the whole sanctuary of that church and he was going to town he was preaching away and as he was preaching in the middle of his sermon uh, the electricity went out yeah. there he stood while preaching uh, in pitch black darkness and being a young preacher, uh, he was not quite sure what to do and he stood there uh, in the dark. And, uh, he would stumble around until one elderly deacon uh, would shout out these words. He said, preach on preacher. We can still see Jesus in the dark. Amen. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, uh, we've got to learn how to see Jesus in the dark. Because certainly God can see us in the dark. Mm -hmm. If we are going to trust God uh, to get where God wants us to be in life, and to be satisfied with what God gives us in life, 
We've got to learn how to trust him even when we can't see him. Yes, my brothers and sisters. It's only then, yes, that we can get to the place where God is trying to get us in life. Yes, uh, uh, when we can't see our hand in front of our face, we still got to trust on. Yes, we still got to learn how to see him. Yes, uh, when things are falling all around us, uh, when the roof is caving in over our head, when raindrops are falling down on us, we've got to learn how to trust him in the midst of it all. Yes, my brothers and sisters, if we can trust him in the storm and the rain, we can get to our destination in life. We can get what we want and we can be satisfied with what we get when we trust in the Lord. And so I want to invite you right where you are to make a conscious decision in your life to trust God in the midst of it all. To put away the foolish requests that would get us in trouble. Yes, to line ourselves up with God's will and trust him through it all. Yes. And my brothers and sisters, God can lead us safe to the other side of our storm. And so my, I want to invite you to just simply trust him right where you are. Lord, we thank you now for your word. We thank you, Lord, uh, that you have showed us that we can knock and the door will be open that we can seek and we can find that we can ask and it will be given and so Lord here we are right now asking Lord that you would enter into the life of that individual who is now ready standing before you Lord asking you in Lord, we pray that you would receive them now unto yourself and you would make them your son, your daughter, even now. We ask that you would fill them with your spirit. We ask them, Lord, like a shepherd, that you would lead them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.